the world has been talking about MCB from past one year and there have been a lot of different applications that you can process. There are a lot of different use cases that you can serve using MCPs. And in this video, I'm going to explain you from very scratch what an MCP is. We will be configuring an MCP server and we'll be actually seeing the use cases. This is going to be a super exciting video. If you are new to MCP, if you have not heard this term before, you can watch this video and you will get the entire context with hands-on practice. So this is going to be super exciting and I am going to have a MongoDB use case in this video. And also I would like to thank MongoDB for helping me create this content. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, MCP is hot, right? MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It's made up of three words. First is Model, Context and Protocol. Let's break, the, break them down into three parts. So, the easiest word out of these is Protocol. That means uh, a rule to do something or, a, or to establish something. For example, you have already heard of TCP, right? It's again a protocol. So, Model Context Protocol. Protocol is a rule, uh, basically... A defined set of rules to do something to achieve something to communicate with something to get something that's it right just understand what is model there can be any model we talk about all the llm models it can be claude it can be chat gpt it can be gemini and context now context is something that's very important with respect to llm for example if you go and ask any llm on a new chat who am i it won't be able to tell you who are you because they don't have the context about you now just suppose that you have mentioned to chat gpt or any other uh, llm that my name is arsh and the next question that you ask the chat gpt or any other uh, llm model is who am i then it will be able to get you the your name because it has the context of your conversation now the same thing is for example these llm models would have been trained let's say an year ago or a month ago even if it is trained every day it won't have the context of what is happening in the real time right for example if you're using any application if you're creating your database in mongodb or if you are uh, doing something in any other application it won't have the context of what is there now to get that context how can we facilitate that how can we get that external information to our llm model this is what mcp is basically very very simple definition very very simple understanding of getting that external information to our llm model and we can query it using a human prompt as we do for any llm and same thing we are going to do for mongodb today now what is model context protocol this was launched this is the concept that was given by anthropic last november and it has been the talk of the town so let's just read these lines these are very very powerful lines and you will get full context MCP is an open source standard for connecting AI applications to external systems. Very true. What This is what we are going to do uh, today. Right. Second is using MCP, AI applications like Claude or ChatGPT can connect to data sources, tools and workflows, enabling them to access key information and perform tasks. Right. So we can access anything, any database, any local files using this and we can perform any action, we can retrieve some information, we can do anything, right? So this is what it enables. Very simple example, they have given an analogy. Think of MCP like a USB-C port for AI applications. Just as USB-C provides standardized way to connect to electronic devices, MCP provides a standardized way to connect AI applications to any of your external systems, right? Currently, if you go and ask your GPT model about the current database that you're working on, it might not be able to uh, help you with, but while connecting it with your MCP, it will be having that context and you will be able to get that information. For example, this is the MCP standard protocol. Uh, it can have a bi-directional flow with your chat interface with any application like Claude desktop or any other chat. Uh, IDs, it, it uh, is capable of connecting to different IDs like your Claude or Goose, different other AI applications, Fire, Super Interference. This is something that they have given your different databases. Uh, We'll be connecting MongoDB database today, one of the very popular databases out there in the market, Popular uh, productivity tools, development tools, and it can get that context from anything and everything that we use in our day-to-day -day life as developers. So agents can access your Google Calendar, your Notion, and act as more personalized AI assistants. Claude Code can generate entire web page using Figma Design. See how, how powerful it is that, that it can design an entire web page just using Claude human prompt it will go and design a Figma design for you. Enterprise chatbots can connect to multiple databases across an organization and that empowers you to analyze data using this chat. AI models can create 3D designs on Blender, right? It can even connect to Blender 
and create those tough 3D designs. So this is the power of MCP. And in this video, we can talk about MongoDB MCP because we all have been using it very frequently. Now they launched it this year and now it's generally available for anyone and everyone from this month and you can also access it. So now MongoDB MCP server, you can connect it like the host with any MCP client like Windsurf or uh, Visual Studio Code or Cloud Desktop. In this specific example today, we are going to pick up Cloud Desktop and we are going to showcase. You can do a lot of things, right? I'll just query some uh, query some things in my database. I'll create a sample database for you to query on, but you can perform a lot of functions. Like you can ask it to list MongoDB Atlas clusters. You can create DB user in your MongoDB Atlas. You can list collections for DB. You can describe schema for collection and a lot of different operations. So all of this is achievable using your MCP. So it interacts with your data using natural language and perform all your database operations right so what it actually enables it it's it's it asks your ai to show the schema of your user collection or it uh, streamlines your database management context aware code generation so these are the three things that uh, mongodb mcp server can perform i'll give the context i'll give the link to the entire announcement in the description go ahead and read that then i'll give the link to their github repository where you can uh, have all, where you'll find all the instructions to set up your mongodb mcp now, these are the five steps that we are going to perform today to connect our MongoDB MCP with our Cloud Desktop. First, we'll create a sample MongoDB cluster just to uh, make you understand how to create that. Then we'll get the connection string. Now, this is very important. Now, this connection string is very important, right? There are three, four methods of doing this, but we are going to do this uh, via this today. Then we'll install MCP server. It's again a very simple command, MongoDB MCP server. And we'll change the config file and then we'll try to query using human prompts from Cloud Desktop. Let's see how it goes. And this is going to be super, super exciting. Now you are aware of what MCP is, what MongoDB MCP is. Let's go through MongoDB MCP's uh, GitHub. So you can see they have given the complete setup details on how can you set up your MongoDB MCP server. There are different ways on which you can set this up. For example, the first way, like a quick starter way, they have uh, told how can you get this up with WinServe, with VS Code, with uh, Cloud Desktop, with Cursor. And in this tutorial, we are going to do this with Claude desktop. So this is the first uh, way in which you are passing out a connection string. We'll, I'll tell you more about what connection string is and how can you pass this up and change the config file. Or it, you can do it via API credentials or uh, this third way, which is standalone service using environment variables and command line arguments and fourth way is using Docker. So you can do it via any way, whichever you're comfortable in. If you have configured do Docker in your system, then you can go via Docker. That's also pretty easy. But in this particular video, we are going to uh, uh, choose the first one. That's uh, option one. And the first step is like the, you'll get onto this page. I'll give the link to this GitHub repo in the description below. You can go and check this out yourself. So we'll go to this MongoDB MCP server. We'll click on sign in. Right, I already have an account on MongoDB and if you don't have, you can create one. It's free to create. So now I've signed into MongoDB Atlas. You can see this in front of me and now we'll be creating a new project. This, so in this section, you can see all projects are there. Let's go and create a new project for this specific demo. I'll name the project as let's say MCP demo. And uh, you don't need to add any key or value pair. You can add it's optional. If you want to share access to this to anyone, you can add their email ID here. I don't want to do that. I'll just create a project. Now we are on the screen and we need to create a cluster. Let's click on create cluster. Once you click on create cluster, you have all these three options. Uh, M, uh, like these three tiers that you can choose to deploy your cluster. I'll choose the free one that still has 512 MB of storage, shared RAM and uh, shared CPU. Uh, you can name your cluster. Let's uh, let it be cluster zero only and they will select the provider. For example, AWS they've selected. They'll automatically take the region in which you are in. For example, it's taking Mumbai for me and you need to create your deployment. Once you click on create deployment, you will have your cluster being created. Here you'll have the username and password. I'll just uh, type in some password. Username also you can edit. You can just copy your username and password and save it somewhere. Right. And then you need to create this database user. Once you click on create this database user, you can choose a connection method. It can be drivers, compass, shell, uh, MongoDB for VS code or Atlas SQL. I have compass already installed on my PC. Let's go ahead with compass. Uh, 
I already have compass installed on my PC. And this is the connection string that you get here. Make sure that you save this connection string very uh, carefully because we are going to use this connection string to get uh, to our connection. And we are also going to change the config file for cloud desktop that we are using with this connection string. So make sure you copy this connection string somewhere. Right. Let's click on done. Once you click on done, now I think you have this cluster running and you can open your MongoDB Atlas. If you don't have MongoDB Atlas for your PC, you can download MongoDB Atlas, MongoDB Compass. So this is MongoDB uh, Compass. This is GUI tool for data exploration. You can click on download now and you will have it for yourself. Now, before we set up in our Compass, let's try and install our MongoDB MCP server. You can open your terminal and within your terminal, you can give this command uh, npm install MongoDB MCP server. So once you click on this command, so it will be installed in your system. I already have it in my system, so I don't need to install it again. So you can install it on your system. So I have MongoDB Compass. I'll click on MongoDB Compass. Now here you have MongoDB Compass and I want to create a new connection. I want to add the new connection, the new cluster that I have made. I'll click on add a new uh, cluster. This is the place where you need to copy paste your connection string. So you copy paste your connection string. Everything else remains the same. You don't need to change anything. Click on save and connect. So it's trying to connect to your connection string and successfully it has connected to your uh, cluster, right? Now you have successfully connected to your cluster. This is how your cluster looks like, right? And within this cluster, you can either create a database, you can open in MongoDB shell or refresh. I do have, have some databases uh, already. I just want to add these databases so that we can query. So here you have create database. You just need to click on create database. Once you click on create database, you can give any name. For example, Arsh 25 DB demo. Collection name can be again, Arsh. 25 and you can create your database now this is where you can export files you can import data however your data is connected to any source of data incoming it can be real time it can be batch you just need to import that data i do have some uh, files that i have downloaded for example this is the flipkart e-commerce sample data now this flipkart e-commerce sample data i'll try importing here just to showcase you the capabilities of this mcp this is a sample database that i have now it is importing this entire database into our mongodb uh, uh, compass so you can see this is the database that we have it has the details about the product name product url timestamp product category retail price discounted price and a lot of things now comes the next part how can you get a config file and how can you uh, config your cloud desktop via it now this is how the cloud looks like right for example all of you we are doing it with a cloud you can do it with cursor also with vs code also whatever uh, uh, you are comfortable with i'll just i just have cloud on my pc so this is how your cloud looks like now this cloud you can query anything on cloud it won't be able to answer uh, anything apart from the data that it has already been trained on so if at all i want to give it context right so i want to give it context of my current database that i just created in mongodb how can we do that how can we connect this cloud desktop with our mongodb server so now you need to open the config file of this cloud so config file of this cloud you will find you'll find it in this in uh, your systems so it would be a json file named as cloud desktop config.json so once you open up this file so this is how uh, the config file of cloud desktop looks like wherein you need to create mcp servers within mcp server for example this one i would have created before for uh, connecting my n n this is n n mcp now this is something that i did for mongodb right so this is my mongodb uh, uri this is the uh, connection string that we created this is the command mongodb mcp server environment variables you need to update and this is this is what you need to add in your config file for uh, cloud so i'll just uh, give you this also in the description below i for the timing, this is not my, so here you need to have your username, here you need to have your password and that's it, right? So let's try putting mine here. So 
So just put in. Now you just need to restart your cloud and ask the questions like for example, are you connected to my MongoDB database? I'll just ask this question. Let's see what it has. It's still connected to my MongoDB database. It has given me the cluster name also. Uh, let's ask some questions that can be taken in human prompt. I don't need to write any SQL query or anything just to get that retrieve that data. For example, we gave it the Flipkart e-commerce database, right? So if I if I'll ask it, uh, give me top three items with maximum discount. So if I'll give this, let's see what it says. It, it is able to help me find top three items with maximum discount. It is going through my list of databases, list of collections. We just created this database. It is helping me find the top three items with maximum discount. So it can see the retail price and discounted price in our database that we provided. Now it's aggregating and it has given me the top three things, right? It's uh, leather two sofas, retail price is this, discounted price is this, and discount amount is this, second most uh, discounted item is this, and third most discounted item is this. Now you can see how simply I'm able to query my database using my cloud desktop and MCP server. So this is now generally available for each and every one of you and you can query any, anything and everything that's possible. Let's try something something else also. I do have a movies database that was uploaded. Let's try and see top 10 movies. Uh, top 10 movies. Let's just give a very uh, ambiguous query. Let's see what it does. So I've given top 10 movies. So it is going to my database, try to find, it is trying to find those 10 databases. It is, it says that it currently only has the e-commerce database. So this movies database I was testing on yesterday. So it was uploaded yesterday, but now I don't have that, but I only have the e-commerce database. So it can query only the e-commerce database. E-commerce database, uh, if, I'll, if I'll just ask which item is uh, related to home decoration. So it is just going to my database, trying to access it, trying to see which item is related to home decoration. So you can see for home decoration, it has given me a double sofa bed, uh, a square wall clock piece, goddess marsh piece. It's, it has given me all the details. You can query anything and everything for your database. We tried this for a sample database, but you can do it for anything and everything, whichever database or uh, whichever thing that you would like. I would like to thank MongoDB for helping me create this content. Also, if you are somebody who's looking forward to know more about MCP, learn more about MCP, definitely go ahead and try it on MongoDB MCP. I'll share the github link in the description also we have tried it in front of you you can try out the same example and you will be all set for the next thing that was it for this particular video hope you enjoyed watching and learning more about mcb servers if you want to see more content related to ai tech engineering definitely go ahead and subscribe to this channel and like this video if you have any doubts let me know in the comments below i'll be more than happy to answer thank you so much all the best good luck and bye